Hi, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome back to Mark D. Maker. Today we're going to do the final stage in the clay sculpture, and that's painting. I'm going to paint a little cat named Spike. I have some new additions here. I have new lighting. So as you can see, we're I'm buying better equipment. We're upgrading, trying to make it nicer for you. Let's get painting. All right, so I've added some clay and did a lot of sanding. You can see that uh, it's a much, I made it much more stocky because my reference material makes him look like he's a pretty hefty cat. Um, and did a lot of shaping with sandpaper. Um, so even if uh, small children are, are, are doing this, you don't necessarily need a knife to carve. You can give them sandpaper and, uh, and say go to town. They, you can shape this stuff fairly easy uh, just using sandpaper. First off, we're going to do two coats of this gesso. It's acrylic gesso and this stuff is like a like a primer. Uh, anybody that uses acrylic paint whether it's on canvas or wood or whatever you're painting uh, they use this this product this stuff it's not only like a primer but it has a little bit of a glue in it which which really bonds to just about anything and it has tooth so if you feel it it feels like a uh, very fine sandpaper so it gives us the paint something to stick on to and hold so it will ensure the paint job will last for a long long time so I've mixed up a couple of colors here gave it a test um, what we're using for the black color on this cat you can see it's black and white is just not black uh, I'm not going to use just the tube of black paint um, and this is the black I put it out as an artist you you want your colors to reflect light and, and to give back so what I'm using to get the dark color is a, a raw umber and it's gonna sound weird but this ultramarine blue and it gives you a really really nice dark color that reflects light back and, and makes it look more vivid um, the, the color black just absorbs all the light and doesn't give anything back um, I've done a couple of carvings and competed in the uh, World Championship Wood Carving Competition in Ocean, Ocean City, Maryland. And when they're judging these birds that are carved, decoys and songbirds and such, um, you can look at the ones that the artists that use just black and it, it, it has a lack of interest, a lack of color. Um, so you can, you can thin this out, this particular color that I have here that's mixed that probably looks pretty black, but it's really more of a gray. Uh, it's a very, very dark gray. And by adding white to it, you can lighten this color and you can start to see more of the mix. Um, when you look at the color black, let's say someone has black hair or the fur of a cat is black, um, if you really take a good look at it, you'll see a lot more colors reflecting back than black. Black is the absolute absence of any kind of color.
So I'm going to try my best to keep the white areas on my reference material here. I'll keep the white areas white um, and, and coat the parts that are dark black uh, with a, a coat of this and then I'll come back with white and then I'll go back with black to get the texturing um, of the fur uh, to make it look more realistic. While mixing this paint, I add water um, because this, this comes out like uh, toothpaste. So I add water to uh, make a thinner consistency um, it, it should, I got a lot of paint on my brush there, but it should, it should flow. When it gets to the point of where you can feel friction and you can see the color thinning out, you go back for more paint. Um, there is a, a product that you can add to paint to make it flow easier called flow medium. Uh, but I found that um, if I use water to thin it out, I can, I can get almost the same results um, as using the, the flow medium. But the flow medium is nice and it dries a little bit. That first, first coat dries. I'm going to talk a little bit about brushes here. You can get a decent paintbrush, and, and if you have a substandard paintbrush, you'll get an awful paint job. You'll be discouraged, and you'll think you can't paint. But if you have a decent paintbrush, it should have uh, a little bit of spring to it. You see this? Um, it's a nylon brush. A really good brush is going to be something like a... Um, sable or mink or something like that and that's great if you're you know you want to spend fifty dollars on a brush uh, for doing high quality watercolor but you can buy a brush like this that has just as good action <clears throat> um, go to the craft store when they have a you know offering a coupon buy it in a you know, a, a pack of them, uh, and for like 10, 12 bucks, you can get a set. I think this whole, all these red paint brushes here were uh, $12, and you get a variety of brushes. Um, they do come with a sizing on them when you first get them, so you, you need to rinse them off, and then you can see how flexible and they spring right back. That's what you want. You want flexible and spring right back when you're working with acrylics. Um, oil paint brushes are made out of like a hog hair and they're, they're very stiff. So uh, you want to be careful. Uh, when you buy it, it'll say right on the package what type of brush you're buying what it's meant for, the type of paint it is meant for, uh, for acrylics and, and doing the type of painting that I'm doing now, an acrylic brush. So I'm coming back with a second coat on these lighter areas. I'm using a softer brush. Uh, it's just easier. This is more of like a, um, some sort of a natural hair brush, but it's, it's more moppy-like. Uh, doesn't have quite the, the spring action like my detail brushes do. Now continue to put on the second coat and make it look like it's a uh, give it a more finished appearance. And we'll continue. One of 
my favorite air dry sculptures. I call them the blues man. I have little sculptures all over the house and in the basement boxes. And every once in a while I run across them and make me smile. I used to use this for mastic when I was doing watercolor and I simply took my knife and and cleaned out it's like a rubber cement cleaned it out and uh, and I see you know the, the brush was basically trashed so what I, I use it for now is detail I, I go into very thick paint and and I can use it as a dry brush for like fur or or uneven areas or or even to stipple, which is just tapping or brushing, dry brushing, which is like this. Um, I never throw a brush away. So I've got the eye colors. I used a, uh, a yellow oxide and just a tad bit of a greenish color uh, to get the eyes, put the pupils in. and. Now what I'm going to use is these stick pins. I'm going to use these stick pins to gently push in, make holes for whiskers. And, and all the whiskers are, I'll show you here, is from a paintbrush, an actual cheap paintbrush is better than an expensive one uh, from a cheap paintbrush took a razor blade just off the, the corners and these will make really nice little whiskers I'll glue them in with just plain old white glue PVA and uh, and then I'll trim them once they're in I'll, I'll refer back to the photos here I'll refer back to that for whisker length and for uh, placement for whiskers on the cat. I really like his little his little soul patch there. Maybe uh, maybe that should have been my cat. I don't know. So I pushed in some uh, cut off strands like so, these little strands from a paintbrush. Here's a helpful tip, before you set those strands down on the table, cut both ends because the work end of a paintbrush is going to be frayed out a little bit. So I had to go through each and every one of these little whiskers and cut off both ends Put a, dip it into a little bit of uh, white glue, PVA glue, and uh, slide it into the holes that I made. Now they're still long. <laughs> Looks a little funny like this. But I will trim these using my reference material as a guide. I'm all done. Trimmed his whiskers. They look pretty good. I'm satisfied with it. Hopefully Jimmy will like it too.